Today on the channel, we take a journey back to the Jack's Bone Crunchers with Jack Pacific Backlash Unboxing. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for a very rare Jax Bone Crunchers unboxing and review, and today we're going to take a look at some Backlash themed figures from the Jax Bone Crunchers. And Bone Crunchers we don't talk a ton about on the channel, uh, as I have a pretty complete collection. I have almost a complete collection. I don't know if it'll ever be complete, as there's a couple of rare ones, and there's so many variants and stuff out there. I got my own rules, and I won't go into that rule my rule book in this video, but Bone Crunchers, they were the best of times, they were the worst of times. I'll never forget the first couple of series, all the way up to the Bad Boys series. You know, getting the LOD and the two packs, the Godwins, uh, Bret Hart, Razor, uh, Diesel, Shawn Michaels, Owen Hart. I mean, there was a lot of heavy, heavy hitters that came out, and I remember being totally shocked going to the store, my local Toys R Us at the time, seeing these on the pegs. It was such an exciting time as for the most part, I had left wrestling uh, in my past. I was a teenager at the time, just a teenager when these came out, Bone Crunchers first came out, and I had left wrestling behind. As there was Bendems, but I never got on the Bendem train. I never originally bought Bendems back in the day. They just did nothing for me. I was all in on Hasbros. I just kept going with the Hasbros, skipped Bendems, then was pretty much out of figures uh, wrestling-wise until the Bone Crunchers came. And I remember my dad and I walking into Toys R Us, and he swooped them all up and said, oh, we got to get them all. They're brand new. we got to get every single one of these, and that's exactly what we did. Uh, and I love the Bone Crunchers. To this day, some people agree with this comment and some don't, like anything else, I guess. But I feel the Bone Cruncher figures, especially those early Bone Cruncher figures, had the most playability of any wrestling figure of all time. I know people say now with the elites and all that and all the different articulation points and all that, Maybe it's just me, but the Bone Crunchers were the best. And I guess I grew up in the Hasbro LJN days. Not a ton of play features there. The Bone Crunchers just felt like absolutely next level. Uh, there was the Bendems, which I guess you could bend, but they just didn't feel like wrestling figures to me. They didn't feel like anything I could play with uh, when I was you know, 11, 12 years old, whatever it was when those came out. Um, so there you go. That's Bone Crunchers for me. That They were very, very uh, sentimental to me, especially those first few sets. But then things went off the rails as we got so many paint changes, uh, variants, weird variants, so much product. I mean, I, I almost wonder if uh, ja Jazzwares with the AEW line is going down some of the similar path similar journey but there was kb exclusive toys r us exclusives there was target exclusives uh, there was multiple sets there were spin-off sets pay-per-view sets there was just so many and a lot of re-releases getting the same version of figures multiple different packaging uh, i would not so crazy that i needed all those if i can get one of every single character i would be good um, I was long out of uh, the Jack's Bone Crunching figures by the time the ones were unboxing today. So this is my first go around the sun with these figures. I got all of these extremely cheap, as most Bone Crunchers are cheap, but they have risen a little bit in the COVID era, as you guys know. But I never had any of these. I think I paid under 10 for each one of these. Uh, slowly working to that complete collection based on my rules. Uh, and these were some that I was missing, and I got them very cheap, like I said. Uh, beater cards on most of these. You'll see this Triple H right here, yellowing card, uh, yellowing bubble on it. Doesn't matter to me. I'm opening them up anyways. But thought we'd do these as one video. Some of these, there's not going to be a ton to talk about each one of these figures, but we'll do our very best to talk about some things and see what's going on with them. So let's just jump in. Let's do this kamikaze style. Let's unbox these. we got a lot of Stone Colds to unbox for sure. Now, Backlash series, what this is a part of, different carding. Most of them we have here are in the orange card. This is the blue carded versions. Uh, and I am by no means an expert saying, oh, Backlash Series 3 had all these characters in it. My memory does not work for that as I was not actively collecting. My heart wasn't attached to it. So I really, uh, you can't just say, oh, you know that Stone Cold from Backlash Series 4 or whatever? I'm going to have no idea if somebody asked me that. But if they show me the picture of it, then it'll come flooding back. That's how I am with most Bone Crunchers pretty much after the Bad Boys set and, and uh, that happened. So Backlash, Superstars, Stone Cold. Obviously, this is the height of Stone Cold Steve Austin Mania, the Jack's Bone Cruncher time. That was when Stone Cold was at his peak, so it's always interesting. Kind of how the Hasbros was the Hogan peak era, and even the LJNs was Hogan uh, era as well. I guess LJNs was more the Hogan era, where Hasbro is really the Ultimate Warrior, Macho Man, 
uh, Hulk Hogan era. So there was a little bit of a trifecta going on there. But I always felt like LJNs was the Hogan era, the definition of the Hogan era. Just like the Jack's Bone Crunchers were the definition of the Stone Cold Steve Austin era. But we get another Stone Cold with a t-shirt. There was a few different ones throughout the years of very strange t-shirts. You know, uh, Bloodstone was one of them. That made no sense. Uh, just some weird shirts. This one, too. Give me a heck yeah, Stone Cold. Yeah, give me a heck yeah. I agree. Beat up carding here. Once again, I don't really care too much. As I uh, don't care about the card on this. On the back, Jax was amazing. They were always promoting, as you guys know. Uh, they had kids belt pack series. You got to promote a ring, of course. And then these play sets. These were really cool. I never had any of those. I have one or two kicking around my collection somewhere that I've come across in my travels. But I don't remember ever buying one of these back in the day. Like I said, I wasn't buying the later Bone Crunchers days. And this was right at the end of Bone Crunchers. Uh, getting ready to move into the Titan Trons and the R3s, which I think are the most atrocious figures of all time. Maybe we'll talk about that one day, why I don't like those. Um, these play sets are cool. The break room brawl. Take your action figures out of the ring and brawl in the break room. Food fight. Finally, Jax has come to the break room brawl. So you get the hot dog cart and stuff. Uh, and then, of course, a House of Pain is a popular one. I know a lot of people have liked that one. Uh, kind of the Stanford, Connecticut gym going on in there a little bit. Uh, you get the backstage mayhem as well. So those are really cool. I mean, that was something I would design as a kid. We would design our own play sets. And now, hey, Jax is giving it to you. So that was always a cool theme uh, for, I think, kids at the time. Kids that were younger than me, they were all in on this. I guarantee it. I would have been if I was a little bit younger for sure. Uh, so let's open him up. I don't think there's anything else to talk about. 12 and up, they recommend here. Hardcore for the hardcore fan. And then the Attitude Ring, a popular ring for a lot of people. This is falling off the card here. See you later up high. Oh, it separates in midair. My dog, Lemmy, goes running. Poor guy. A little yellow plastic prison. Lemmy, you don't have to leave. Oh, I've just offended Lemmy. He's leaving. He's had enough. Plastic prison. Pull him out. Maybe see you later now some of these and hopefully you don't have any of that some of these are so old in the package and the elements have got to them sometimes you open them up and the paint comes off on the plastic that is pretty brutal uh, same with accessories stuff like that uh, this is a much later stone cold steve austin mold i don't know if they ever perfected stone cold for me i'm trying to think what the perfect stone cold figure would be definitely not the first incarnations in the bone cruncher days of uh the bad boys set I, I loved that figure at the time that was our first real stone cold we had uh but they definitely improved on some stuff but then they seemed to get too bulk bulky and the proportions got too crazy like this stone cold here he's got like the incredible hulk upper torso here he's just way too big uh just an over exaggeration of his fists and everything else how big he was it's just too much for me but they did get some decorations on here they did get his tattoo down there why not 100 percent accurate at least they tried uh, you know, they always tried to move the needle a little bit, but then they would take a couple steps back with some of these variants and some uh, missed opportunities, mismatched arms, just weird things. I mean, these were definitely thrown together in a factory where nobody ha had a clue what they were doing most of the time. They'd say, oh, I got this arm, I'm going to throw it on this body. You get weird variants throughout, and if you're trying to track down every one of those variants, it will never happen. Uh, that's for sure. But this Stone Cold, he does have an earring as well. Always seems weird to me, but Stone Cold did have an earring, but it just seems like a weird thing. I, I don't know. I always felt it was weird, but if you look back at pictures, he did have an earring. So there you go. Stone Cold, is anything special? Not really. We've had the same mold. I think we might even be opening this mold up later in the video, so we'll see uh, how that goes. But uh, it is what it is, well, and that's how all these are going to be. They are what they are. Are they the greatest? No. Are they the worst? Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Here's Triple H, yellowing card. Now we've moved on to the orange card series. Uh, a little bit later, this was a 2000 series. This was the end of 2000. Then the rest, I believe, are from the year 2001. We're promoting the exact same things on the back of the package here, so nothing really to talk about or look at here. This one coming off the card as well. Like I said, you can get these cheap. If you're getting openers, you can get some that are somewhat damaged. That's the way to do it. That's the way. See you later up high. Triple H, once again. There he is, Plastic Prison. Not a fan of this Triple H figure either, <laughs> really. It's not Triple H we know and love. Gosh, these are hard to get out. There it is. See you later. Up high through the uprights. Uh, once again, crazy buff bodies on him. Very thick. He's got the thick thighs, the thick arms. He does have a plastic um, vest on him. Sideburns. Look at that. I mean, if, if you took all the logos off here, I don't know if you would know this is Triple H. Maybe by the hair, that's maybe the telltale sign, but it doesn't, to me, look like Triple H in the face. 
And there was a lot of Triple H's, just like Austin. We had varying degrees. I always thought that first Bad Boys Triple H was very good. I always thought that one was really good. Um, I always felt that was the one that looked most like him from that time frame, I guess. But then we did get the DX era. We got the uh, other eras as well as they worked through the years with the Jack's Bone Crunchers. I've never heard the story, and maybe it's out there. Maybe I missed it, or maybe somebody would tell me. I'd say, oh, yeah, that's why. I wonder why they finally killed the Bone Crunchers and said, we got to go to Titan Trons. Why didn't they keep it going? I mean, maybe it was just, hey, you got to freshen up. you got to get new things to get new collectors, new eyes. Sometimes a start over is bad. I hated it when Jax lost the license with the Ruthless Aggression stuff. But you know what? It starts everything all over again. You get people that maybe didn't get in at the beginning of Jax that were picking and choosing. Now Mattel's here. Hey, I can go all in. I'm going to get everything. It's the start of a new collection. We're seeing that a lot with AEW Jazzwares right now. A lot of people all in. They didn't get in at the right time or whatever of Mattel. They're all in on AEW. But then as we get four or five series in, I've already seen a lot of people say, no, I'm no longer a completist. I'm no longer a mid on card completist, at least as of this point. We'll see if that changes. But as of right now, I'm out. Um, that's just interesting, but I never heard officially why they changed, but I got to think it was all business related because at the end of the day, it is the toy business. We got to remember that, take that step back. It would have been cool to continue forever, but I think technology got better, face scans, real scans, stuff like that. So it was just constant improvement, constant learnings, stuff like that. So there you go. How about to X-Pac? All right, we're doing it kind of kamikaze style, like I said. So we've seen this packaging before. You got our old boy X-Pac. Now, going back here, we, I think we had this X-Pac previously with a different color combination. But when I see this body mold, I think of early Stone Cold Steve Austin figures in the Bone Cruncher days. Not his first one, but they did a lot of t-shirt versions with Austin 316, that Bloodstone one, uh, with the same body mold. So getting the most out of their molds, uh, they did it all the time with these Bone Crunchers. Yeah, D'Lo Brown in the Vader body. I mean, there's a lot of them. We could go on and on for days about it. But X-Pac... Uh, Family Dollar, $5 right here. So I'm not sure if this was an exclusive line to Family Dollar at the time. Very well could have been. Uh, as a kind of a cheap Rite Aid, Walgreens, Family Dollar type. Dollar General, of course. We know the ECW figures had this going on with Dollar General as well. A way to get more product out there with some cheap repaints. Uh, keeping them happy with some exclusives. Uh, that very well could have been the scene here. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not an, enough of an expert. See you later. To uh, know the answer 100%. See you later. See you later. Plastic Prison, old X-Pac right there. Looking only like he can look. I mean, you do know this is X-Pac. Uh, at least I do for sure, and I'm sure most of you guys do as well. This is not bad. See you later. Head on this one's okay. You know it's X-Pac, but it looks like he got busted open in his mouth. His teeth are all bloody. Oh, he had a rough night at the bars or something happened to him there, but he's got the bloody teeth. Not the best body style but this i always felt was a good street gear mold it was a great for a street gear stone cold and a great for an x-pac street gear it's like you know x-pac going to the ring doing interviews and stuff that's what this x-pac represents to me so not too shabby willie stan they are so far they're all standing here as well i've been currently working on my bone cruncher setup as you guys know i have a new to toy room that is going up and i was actually spent one whole night working on bone crunchers how i want to display them i think i got most of them into one bookshelf uh, you guys will see that. Just stay tuned. We'll eventually have uh, that on the channel and share all my secrets for you. Oh, back to Stone Cold again. Interesting one. Just a plain old baseball jersey Stone Cold. I don't know. Whole back of this is the same stuff. So we're not getting anything new on the back. I'm kind of surprised there's no promotion of figures on the back, but I guess it is what it is. Um, but Stone Cold in baseball jersey. And did he wear this? I, Stone Cold wears wore some things that were a bit strange every once in a while. Because when you think of him, you think of the Austin 316 shirt, some of his gimmick shirts. But every once in a while, there'd be some uh, little crazy merchandise from WWE Shop. And I'm sure he had to wear it to help promote it and stuff. But things like this, you don't remember Stone Cold wearing. But I know he did wear some weird things uh, here and there. That's for sure. See you later packaging. Whoa, that one went far. There is the plastic prison. Not a lot of difference here. This might even be the same one. We'll grab that other Stone Cold. Let's see. That's just, there we go. See you later. So, yeah, this is the same as the, this one. So, we got more of a glossy paint going on on the T-shirt and the boots. And then you got a blue instead of black on the jorts. Oh, he loved the jorts. And then you got a totally new shirt. And it's very glossy where this one's more flat. But it's the same exact figure. It's just another repaint. And same thing holds true for this one. This one as this one. It's just 
the proportions are all wrong. It just seemed crazy, especially if you tried to put these with your older bone crunchers, some of the Series 1s and stuff. They got hulked up so much, it almost feels like a totally different toy line. Uh, at least that's how I've always felt. But this one, all right, I guess, if you're an Austin completist or something. I'm always so nervous to turn these guys' arms the first time. I've, I've seen them break off and horror stories and nothing worse than that. Um, but he was all right. They got the bone crunching ash. He's got his tattoo on there as well. Is what it is. By no means my favorite Austin. But if you're going to get them all, you got to get ones like this every once in a while. This one doesn't want to stand. It's all that gloss on him. Just nobody wants to stand if they're all glossy. There it is. Whew, using my powers. We're down to the last one. And of course, it's Stone Cold Steve Austin once again. Another t shirt. This time he's got a hat with him. Oh, you got to love that. So this one's from 2001, so it's the next year. And with that, we get new packaging on the back. We're promoting, promoting rings and stages. We're promoting the Finishing Move series, which is an interesting series. I never had any of those, but those, for a lot of people, are the forerunner for uh, AEW Jazzwares, if you look at some videos on those. Uh, we're also promoting the Titan Trons. Uh, first time we've seen the Titan Trons promoted, at least on the channel here on the back of the package. I'm sure it was done before, but... Uh, as you guys know, I absolutely hate the Titan Trons. I did do a video called That's So Hard to Say Goodbye where I dumped, I thought my whole Titan Tron, co Titan Tron collection, but uh, they just multiply somehow and I found a whole bunch more. So I'll probably sell those one of these days too. And Titan Trons just never did it for me. I just absolutely hate them. Um, I, because of my age, I'm sure there's kids that those were their first wrestling figures that they absolutely love the Titan Trons. And I get it. I understand that. Uh, but for me, all day long, no thank you. See you later. See you later. A little plastic prison, stone cold, looking only like he can look. Once again, getting the most out of that body. That whole upper torso is the same as the other two we saw. Pull them out. See you later. This is great if you love a good punch. I mean, this is a big mitten on uh, stone cold here. Does he have his earring? Yes, he does. He's got his nice red baseball hat. Just looks so goofy and strange. Stone cold, Austin 316, stone cold on the back. It is what it is. I mean, getting the most out of your molds, and by all means, they got every mold they could under the sun out of the rock and stone cold figures. Uh, that is for sure. Oh, look at that. I got all four of them standing there perfectly. What, what are the odds of that happening? But I'm going to continue to buy some of these bone crunchers. Got to get a deal. You know that. I really need to get a checklist out. And uh, now that I have them all displayed perfectly, I can kind of go through, oh, yeah, I don't have that one. I don't have that one. Some of the ones, of course, I'm missing are the hard-to-get ones. And I just hate spending anything over $20 for a bone cruncher. It just doesn't feel right to me. But you got to do it sometimes. But playing that long game, coming through, figured we'd open up some of these. I don't think there's enough meat on the bone for me. I just don't have the history with these like I do maybe some of the other figures out there. So I figured you throw five, do a quick unboxing, do a little bit of talking, and see where it went from there. And that was the, the way to do this one. But you guys in the comments, tell me your thought on the bone crunchers. Did you start with them? Did you pass them? Were they before your time, ahead of your time? Let me know where you stand on Bone Crunchers. Uh, it's just a short window of time, you know, a five-year window, something like that, four or five years. If you were there, you get it. If you weren't, it's hard to explain. That's kind of how I would sum up uh, the Bone Crunchers. But you guys tell me your thoughts below. As usual, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the old notification bell and all that kind of fun stuff. And uh, don't forget to follow me on social media at SirPaul64, Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson, and of course, ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. Uh, pick up a t-shirt. Support the channel. So for three Stone Colds, an X-Pac, and a Triple H, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.